Look at your neighbors. I know you're going through something. But what things? <laughs> I, I, I love the way things are somehow another place within the confounds of, of the language of the Greek and the Hebrew because they always have an additional connotation to it. When the Lord responded and said, what things, it was particularly related in, in the aspect of whatever it is. There's nothing that would put you in that position in a permanent place where you will walk like this and be sad like this. Nothing should have you like this. What things is what he's saying. What in the world are you sad about? What is it about your life that has got you in such a quandary that you are so discombobulated that God cannot offer you a remedy. He does have the answer. Jesus is the answer. Th this, particular, this particular scripture deals with uh, a place called Emmaus. Emmaus is, is in, in, in some languages, it means a warm spring. In some languages, it means a little dome or a little place. Now, I want to talk about this for just a minute because for me, it somehow or another gives me a particular aspect of how life is and what the devil does to us and how the devil tries to put us in a downward spiral. He does not want us to ever get to the place where we are feeling good about ourselves because if he knows that he can attack us, Within our, in the area of our emotions and our attitudes, that it causes us not to be able to see clearly. We're not able now to be able to see what the Lord has for us. And if we do know that there is a prophetic utterance over our lives, oftentimes it does not matter based on the way we view our lives. And we go through things, and many times when you go through stuff, you want somebody to talk to. We want somebody to tell about what we're dealing with and how we're feeling and what's going on in our lives. These two gentlemen here had just found out about uh, the crucifixion and they were on their way back toward Emmaus. They were there, they were walking about seven miles, the Bible says three, four, three, three furlongs, and they were on their way, walking that way, and, and Jesus showed up. It is an amazing thing to me how he shows up at particular times. The times that we don't feel like it, the times is when our feelings and our emotions have captivated our behavior. And when that begins to happen, I'm so glad that God will step in. He will step in. These particular events following the crucifixion, I'm going to discuss today because I think they have validation in our present situation. I think understanding how Thomas felt about how he was not there when Jesus showed up in the room. I think that it is important as we look at somehow or another how Jesus prepared fish for them as they went fishing. And Peter said, let's go back to fishing. This particular aspect of the word of God tells us today that these were two men who had been so messed up, so depressed because their Savior had died. The one they trusted in. The one they believed in. The one that could walk on the water. The one that could feed 5,000. The one that could raise the dead. All of a sudden, this one is gone. The one that gave me the ability to say, you know, I know things are going to be all right because Jesus, he worked everything out for me. Jesus fixed it for me. But what God is trying to get us to understand that because he has gone his way, He's left us in charge. You want to tell your neighbor beside you, say, I am in charge. Not only in charge, but as the children say, I'm large and in charge. I am the one that you can come to. I want you to help me today because it is imperative that you understand that oftentimes the only Jesus that people will see will be the one that's on the inside of you. And many times the only one that you will see will be, will be the one that's on the inside of you. Many times you've got to understand that the Christ in you is the hope of glory. The Christ in you is the mystery. 
It is the Jesus on the inside of you. And if you don't pay attention to what's on the inside of you, you will never get out of the rut that you're in right now. You got to convince yourself and talk to yourself that the God that I serve is worthy to be praised. Everything will be all right. He will deliver me. He will bring me up out of the hall. You've got to talk to yourself. Not only talk to yourself, but you've got to talk him up out of you. Here they are, walking. There's something I want to say that particularly may cause a little note of interest to in many of you that are listening. Because Jesus had a tendency. He showed himself to over 5,000. That is a particular record. There's an indicator that he died before about 5,000 people, 500 people. And he showed himself to about 500 people. He showed himself alive to those that saw him die. He showed himself alive to those who saw him die. Now, th this is the part I like. Because when folk think that you're not going to recover... Sometimes you ought to show yourself to folk who participating and participated in your downfall. Come on, be seated. Let's talk for just a minute. He showed himself alive to those who saw him die. Even to the place where these two men, it is suggested historically that these two men were not that intellectually astute when it came to the Old Testament. There were things that they did not understand and that they did not know. So they had just gotten into the faith and just begin to believe that, that, that Jesus Christ is the way. He's the truth. He, he's the life. And, and they began to hear what he had done and they became followers of him. And it is suggested that they were not old followers. They were new followers. You know how it is when you first get in church. And you love everything that goes on in the house of God. And you're just excited. And then all of a sudden, the excitement that you have is, is dissipated by a particular situation. And you walk around with your head hung down. Here these two men are on this road to a little place. Can I talk to you for just a minute? Because it is important that when you begin to go through a situation, whatever it might be, that you do not go down. Don't go to a smaller situation. Do not go to a lesser aspect. Because oftentimes when you get to a smaller situation, it does not work well for you. Are you listening to me? In other words, if I'm going through hell and high water, I do not want to talk to somebody that's going to make it worse. Because sometimes you can talk to some folk that will make what you're going through worse. They don't know God. They know nothing about God. They don't know how to tell you how to hold on. They can't tell you, explain to you the understanding of the mysteries of Christ. How Christ will send you through a place just to make you better. How Christ will cause you to have trials and tribulations just to make you stronger. How Christ will sit you in a situation whereby it looks like you'll never get up out of it. That's his method. That's what he does. If you don't believe me, go to the Bible. You'll find every kind of story in in the Bible that will tell you that God always brings you down before he brings you up. And if you really want to be blessed, you got to be broken before you can be blessed. 